request you to join us as we worship and praise the Lord. Because for sure, He has been so faithful to us. Despite everything that we are going through, He has been so faithful. Father, we will thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, because you've been there for us. And you are there for us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for that love you're showing us, that unconditional love. We bless you, Lord. We bless you.
that you've been there for me. Thank you for your goodness, which is running after me. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. Oh my God, you're my king. We worship you, we worship you. Hallelujah. Oh, you are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for us. You made you a God all by yourself. You God from beginning to the end. There's no place for us you made. You a God all by yourself. You a God.
I always worship you. For you are my God. Then you are my king. With everything that I am, I worship you. Bye. 
Matiwe to Sinza. There is an exchange of your presence with our worship. With this worship, Lord, we know you are working. You have not left us like abandoned children, no. You have not left us like orphans, no. You are our Father who will always be there for us. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We love you, 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 love you. Oh, come on. Oh, Nakusinza. 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 We worship you, Lord. We give you glory and the honor. We bless your name. Praise the Lord. Come I ever speak. Uh, I am happy today to share with you the word of God. And I pray that the Lord speak to the answers with this message. Let us pray as we start. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for that, this time of sharing your word. We want to commit ourselves to you. We want to commit ourselves to you. And to ask that the Holy Spirit will interpret and will reach out to us to anybody who will be within the sound of this message. So that none of us who will listen will go away empty handed. But we will receive the word of life. That we minister to them in accordance with their needs. Lord, we thank you for being here with us and for taking charge of this time of sharing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today, I want to share with you message on prayer. On prayer that contributes to bringing about revival. That will bring about life in your lives. And life in the church of Jesus Christ. I started preaching this message actually a few days ago. And the Lord had shown me that there is like a dry spell in the lives of God's people. It is like it is inside our hearts there is a thirsty land. There is, there is a dry ground. When you watch, I have been watching on, on TV when they have shown places which have which are experiencing drought and they are very dry. What you see is land which has nothing alive on it. Actually, the land is so dry that it has even cracked. There is no vegetation. If you see any animal like a cow, it is either dying or it is already dead. If you see human beings moving up and down there, they are looking, they are just looking for water. 
and I began to imagine it when it happens in our spiritual lives. When our hearts become like that thirsty land. Like that dry ground. So that there is nothing really that is alive. The, the, you, ju- you are just there, but you know that something is really wrong. You feel like you love the Lord, but then you feel like the Lord is far from you. When he, they preach the word of God, you just feel like this is business as usual. I don't see anything unusual about what they have preached. I don't even feel like the Lord touched me about anything. What they are talking about is what we have been hearing all along. When you begin praying, you find it is a matter of fact prayers. Uh, they, are, they are also like dry prayers. They, sometimes we call them religious prayers. You are just going through the motions. It's like you are saying, okay, we come in here, stand up and sing a song, sit down and pray a prayer, and, and, and I mean, and the service ends. You are going to go and 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 Nothing is alive. Even the heavens look like they are brass. They are, they are, they are hard. Nothing is going through to reach God. I do not know whether any of you have experienced this kind of thing. And I just want to share with you that this kind of condition it needs God. Because many times when we look inside ourselves we see that there is nothing wrong. In fact, we kind of go to God and say, God, if I've done anything wrong, please forgive me. I don't know what I've done wrong, but if it is there, Lord, just forgive me. But still the dryness persists. In the book of uh, in the book of Isaiah, they talk about the Holy Spirit bringing, becoming like water. Water that is poured on the dry ground. You look in Isaiah 40. Let me try to look it up. All right, but I'll get it. I'll find it and I'll share it with you. But the Bible says that on the dry ground, on the thirsty land, God is pouring on water. He's pouring on his spirit. And then the grass shall grow as if it is in the middle. What am I saying? I am saying that kind of condition can only be sorted out by the Spirit of the Living God. And the Spirit of the Living God comes to us as we plead with God in prayer. I want to first go back and say what causes what causes this dryness, this this the inside of us to be like that dry, thirsty ground. If you look in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 3, it 
Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I want to share with you about strongholds. Because I am convinced that the strongholds that Satan builds in us, they are responsible for the dry and thirsty ground in our hearts and our inability to respond to God and our inability to see fruit in our lives our inability to be touched by God so that when others are saying God has spoken to me for you you are saying her and you should also he spoke to me touched me. And then you say, oh, you was like usual. I mean, I didn't feel anything. Sometimes you even feel like the other person is telling lies. And you try to say, but what really touched you? If you are friends, you can even begin to laugh at them. Saying that, what is it that really touched you in that song? Now, that what, what was being preached today is the usual. I mean, we had, I think, almost the same thing the other Sunday. For you, are saying it touched you. Oh, what do you mean? What really touched you? Hey, chavali, don't you think that you are going to say that you are going to say that you are going to say that let me tell you, for people whose hearts have already received the refreshment and the pouring of the Holy Spirit on them, even some tiny, even, even if God whispers something in their ears, they feel so touched and they feel so broken. It reminds me of, uh, of David when he was in the stronghold and, and Saul was looking for him and then God gave him an, I don't know if it was God but God gave him an opportunity if we could put it that way to kill Saul and even his servants were saying Aha, this is the time which God told you that he's going to give your enemies into your hands and so he got a, 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 like a, a, a knife. And he cut a small piece on, on Saul's cloth. But immediately he cut it. His heart was struck by guilt and conviction. And he said, I cannot do anything to the Lord's anointing. Some of them, some of us, we want to be touched by God after you have killed a person. But this one just cut a piece of cloth. But the conviction was so heavy on his heart. It is clear that the heart of David that time was soft toward God. It was tender toward God. Think about a person like Peter. Peter, the Lord Jesus, after he had denied the Lord. Peter, uh, and the and the cock crowed. 
And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. When their eyes met, Peter got broken. And he went outside and waited. There is a heart that is softened toward God. The Bible says that I will remove from you the hard, rocky heart. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And that heart of flesh, the Holy Spirit, when He passes by, you are touched by God. You are responsive to God. You are tender toward God. I want to go again. What causes this hardness? Paul talked of strongholds. And he said that we have strongholds in our hearts which need to be pulled down. Some of these strongholds, they show themselves in arguments and certain things in our hearts which we have allowed to exalt themselves against God. And thoughts that are just wild and they are not on God. They are just, you know, you know, wandering thoughts on the things that are not pleasing to God. Paul, in other words, was saying, when we engage in those kinds of imaginations, to those kinds of arguments, then what happens? It forms like a war. Strongholds can be like a wall. Like an impenetrable wall around your soul and around your Like the wall of Jericho. Could be called a stronghold. Inside those walls of Jericho. People were doing evil things. They were in idol worship. They were in, a, in, 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 in immorality. They were murdering children and sacrificing them to demons. They were doing everything evil that you can, their mind can cause. But then they had walls around them. So they said, well, if you can't enter here, we have closed the gates. We shall continue with our own things. Even if you try, you will not enter. Sometimes our hearts are like that. We build walls of resistance against God. And inside those walls of resistance against God, all kinds of things are going on. Even people are doing things that they are not supposed to do. All kinds of things are going on. Even people are doing things that they are not supposed to do. The enemy is very tricky and very subtle. He starts small, but then he builds something which is concrete. If you are involved in thinking about something immoral in your mind, or lustful in your mind, because nobody can see inside your mind. In fact, if God was to open up and put a video here in front showing all what we are thinking about maybe from morning to evening. I think all of us would say, God, please don't do that. Let not people see what I have been thinking about. Because I may have been thinking lustful so thoughts. And yet I am saying me, I am not a fornicator and I am not an adulterer. And I may be saying, ah, me, I know how to control my anger. But inside there, I am dying with rage against people who have annoyed me. I, it is like inside I am almost even punching someone's face. But on the outside I am saying, ah, 
I, I managed to control these things. Nenga kongulonga ba na swans chino chibe chibe. Oh, I may say I don't blaspheme. Oh, ba na ogama siyo kira bobi. But in your mind, you are saying, ah, ah, those things which they talk about, like speaking in tongues, these things, you know, people fall with them. The Holy Spirit is really not in me. Even me, I have the Holy Spirit. Uh, this speaking in tongues doesn't work. But in your mind, you are saying, ah, those things which they talk about, like speaking in tongues, these things, you know, people fall with them. The Holy Spirit is really not in me. And you are opposing the word of God in your heart. You are opposing the move of God. Even when they speak a word when they are preaching, you just laugh at it. And you are sarcastic. And you make fun of the things of God. But on the outside, you are telling yourself, ah, for me, I can't blaspheme. I can't blaspheme. I can't talk bad things about God. I can't talk bad things about His Word. But inside there, they are all settled there, those things. Oh, you are saying, I am not a liar. I am not a deceiver. But inside of your heart, you are actually planning to deceive someone. You are trying to You are thinking of how you can compromise your standards as a Christian. And those thoughts are going on in your mind. And, and you are not even stopping them. They keep on going on and going on and going on. And you say I'm not a murderer. No, God, I'm not a murderer. But because you have this anger and forgiveness and bitterness, you do not know that actually you are a murderer. You are saying to me, I don't do idol worship. But whenever we have these things going on again and again in our life, they actually become like a sacrifice on an altar of Satan. And you know what happens as time goes on? You become hardened. It is like you are putting cement in, the, in sand and you are really putting it on and it is hurting. And it becomes a stronghold. So when time goes, and people are talking about God, and for you, you are just far from God. I mean, you look at, this, at the cement in front of me here. Can you come and can something spring up like a plant through this cement? Can the grass come through? It is because it has been hardened over the, over the days, over the months. And now, Paul says that with these kinds of strongholds, you need God to give you weapons of the Spirit. Because now you've reached a point when they are talking about something, the only thing you can do is to argue against it. And you are trying to exalt things in your life which are against God. When they are telling you those films that you are watching on your phone, they are going to ruin your life. You are saying, but what's wrong? No, I mean, I watch them, but I still go to church. I sleep. Never. But you are building mortar. You are putting mortar on something and making it fall. Na ya to ina chosimba ati chigero kufuka enko koto. And Paul says, Paul agama, that the weapons of our warfare. They are not cannons, but they are mighty in God for pulling down those strongholds. And they cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against God. And they literally capture those thoughts and they make the movie of Christ. Let me tell you, those thoughts, if they are not captured, you imagine a wild animal. There is no way you can tame a wild animal except you catch it. 
Okuchi kongo jikute. And after you catch kongo, you bind it. Era ngo jinyweze za ojisiba. And then you get rid of it. Ah, no jiwona. And that's what Paul is saying. Paul wa gamba. That you need to capture your thoughts. Wete kuwa mbebiro wonso bi. By the weapons of the spirit. Nebyo kwa nsebyo moyo. By the blood of Jesus. No msai kwa Yesu. By prayer. No kusaba. By by casting out. No kukoba. Those things that have been in your mind. Ebyo bitu bya demo do wonsa yo. Actually Paul says. Paul agamba that these strongholds can be overthrown. Can be broken down. Because when they are broken down, then your heart gets into a condition that can be touched by the the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord can be poured upon your heart. And life will spring up. Let me tell you, brethren, When there is an issue that concerns you, you can take a short prayer. Because these, these weapons of the Spirit, they are launched out of prayer. They are launched, they are launched back for these weapons of the Spirit. It is in prayer. Just you many of us, we have been See what is happening in Ukraine. In the war between Russia and Ukraine. And you can see them in some place. And they launch their their missiles or whatever weapons are. And they go like fire. And they hit right onto the target. And they hit right onto the target. And they destroy a bigger and stronger building. And they hit right onto the target. That's what Paul was talking about. That you can launch those weapons of the spirit. Paul is saying that you can launch those weapons of the spirit. Just so take away your crimes and your moyo. And they will land on those strongholds. And they will shut up. They will scatter the dust. Praise the Lord. But I want to say again that these weapons of the spirit can only be launched out in prayer in the presence of God. Be able to deal with that hard, rocky heart which is made up of strongholds which were built up over the years over the months of just doing things of fulfilling your whole life with those thoughts and imaginations which are evil. There are certain things which are very, very important in this launching. The first one, I will call it persistence. Persistence is very, very important. I will not go to read the verses because the time is running out. But if you look in the book of the book of Or, or, or the book of kings and you look at the story of Elijah Elijah after the judgment of the prophets of Baal he began praying for rain because Israel had been without rain under the judgment of God for three years and a half he was praying for rain for three years and a half that the devil had been judged. He went into the presence of God today. The Bible says that he held down. I don't know in which state he sat. But some people think that he was like a woman who was going to give birth. And he started pleading because he knew that was the time for God to send to send rain. So he held down and And he prayed. And he sent his servant and he said, Is there anything in the sky? And the servant said, I see that. And he continued praying. And he said the second time. He said, No, it is still so dry. There is nothing. And he went the third time. The fourth time. The fifth time. The sixth time. The seventh time. And the servant said, Now, 
I see a cloud like a hand over man. Oh, mtu na magama ndabe chire ngom kono kwa mtu. And that's it now. Na magama chimala. I hold a hammer and say run the rain is coming. Na ita akabu na magama tuka enkube ja. And he he will set up both his robe and rain ahead of Ahab to say chariot to run away from the coming. Yena from na grobe na tuka o masu gemba la sasa akabu. It is that persistence. Sometimes. Many of us when we begin praying. The very first time. Second time. Third time. We say I don't understand. Oh, we just, I don't see anything. Sina chenda ba. People have said we are praying for 14 days at the beginning of this month. Aba twaka matusaba enda kumina nya. Nange mbate sabe na kuzokumina nya ngasiba. God is far from. Nenga apeka tonda chali wala. Let me tell you persistence will make. Ka kubulira kulemera ko kuleta kwana kula. And being desperate. Eh rano kubango yayana. Desperate. Okuyayana. Now being desperate. Okuyayana kuno. So chikulu. We see it in the, I can use two examples. So we see the can use the life of Hannah. So we see the life of Hannah. Hannah didn't have children. Hannah tia ina mwana. You can go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. Osoke na Musamile chisoke sole soka. And he had a poor wife called Penina. Ila ina mucha wa itwa Penina. And Penina actually you know the Bible says that the, her husband Elkanah loved Hannah even more than Bible ye gamba ati elukana yagala nyokana okusinga penina. Hana didn't have to. Lekana te ina mwana. And the Bible says that Penina had boys and girls. Era Bible ye gamba pena ina abalenzi na nabo 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 bwala. Whether they were six whether they were eight. Siwanyo abali mukaka oba munana. If for example they were six. Katuka mwa abali mukaka. Then it means Hana was without children for many years. Sikiza ati kata ina bana emyaka minji. Ile kise kyo na kana yana kula motima kwe na gama mukama nkalo mwana. Ngachinga kwe nange mitima cha finga tuino lokalo. And you say no Lord. No gama ati mukama nita. I have have your holy spirit. Nino kuba no mwe mukufu. Pour water of refreshment. You are amo amaza gokuzwa wuje. In my heart. Motima kwange. And one day. Era na kulomo. As they went to the temple to worship. Baba kana mweka rokusiza. Kana ya kabili ya mukama. Mubuka wa mutima kwe. The Bible says in fact I think we can look at that chapter 1 of 1 Samuel. First Samuel it soka, esule soka. The Bible says. Bible ikamba. The first four. Muri nyiyo 12. Actually if we can begin from verse 10. Tanike kuri nyiyo 10. And she was in bitterness of soul. Let me read the whole thing. Part again in the And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a male child. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart; only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. From there, verse thirteen. From verse ten, thirteen. No more you go. No more you go. Go and get Kumuluma. Na asama mukama na akaba nyo amaziga na ye yamwe ya munayo garanti ai mukama oweje boli bango tunulide enna kuzomzana wo zala bye no jijukira no tera bila muzana wo no na ye no mu na ye owo muzana wo owo muzana wo omwana wo bulenzi awo ndimu wa mukama enna kuzonna ezobola mwe so ne naka mweno tekale ita ku mutwegwe awo ratuka we ye yongero kusaba mu maso ga mukama eri ne yekanya akamwake irakana yayogera mu moyo kwe emimwaji je jatu obera na eto wozirie 
teriawulikika eri kye avalo woza nti atamidde yeah so this is Hannah actually she was not even shouting like sometimes we shout era kana italeka nga fo is nako ezimo tulekana the bible says that his lips were moving Bible yake imani tijatobera. Nenga tadi anza kulira tobozi ye. Deep down in the heart of Hana. Eh busiba mutima kwa kana. She was crying to the Lord. Yali akabirira mukama. And she was in bitterness of soul. Eh ranga ali mukawo bo moyo. And what happened? Che chabao. Life sprang up. Obulamu ne bufayo. And Hana conceived and did not conceive of an ordinary child. Kana nabo olubutu leti afuna mwana wa bulijjo. She conceived Yafuna olubuto nga lwa mwana eranga nabbi In other words era that had brown etakeli ekalu that brown etakeli ya tena mazi rock up yamenyeka god poured water on the thirsty land mukama nayi wa mazi kutaka era ili mwenyota and life came up obulamu ni buyimuka omeruka i don't know whether we are willing simanyo banga twetekese to be desperate okuyayana to be persistent okulemera ko In fact when you look in the if we go to the to the new testament I want to read but you remember in, I think it is chapter 12 of acts when peter was arrested Petro by we, herod Petro and intending to actually kill him like he had killed james the church began praying they refused even to not go back home they remained in one place and kept praying the bible calls five days and addis bible ejito okusaba ko kulemera ko no kwekwe wayo and they prayed if peter had been killed singa peter yatibwa the church was still so young e kanisa yali chali nto it would have affected very 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 chali madde chile so ne bunji nyo kanisa eno Nesala zawe. Zaiti na Petro kunuli ba malaika wa mukama. God actually sent the angels. Mukama yatuwa malaika. And prevented them. Ni bagano kufa. And eventually. Era. Not far from that time. Obutsuwa ne kuserecho. Peter himself wanted to kill Peter. Oyayaka nokuta Petro. Was judged by God and died. Na asile bo musango katonda na atwa. Look at Isaiah 60. Laba Isaiah nkaga mu pili. Ebi tu ibanga bina chuka. Tuino kya yana. Tuino kulemera ko. Isaya nkaga mu pili. Isaya nkaga mu pili. Fast one. Onyu soka. For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamb that burns. Rasa yuni chindi Jerusalem chindi vanne ma kuumbula okutuso otukirivu bwe we buli fuluma go kumasa amasa no mulokozi no mulokozi wenge tabaza eyaka. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord will name. Kale amawanga gali laba butukirivu bwo ne bakabaka bonna ekitiwa kyo. Awali tumibwa erinye erija akamwaka mukama likali tuma You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God Era oliba ngule ya bulunji mu mukono gwa mukama ne kufira eyo bwaka baka mu mukono gwa katonda wo You shall no longer be termed forsaken nor shall your land be more be any more be termed desolate but you shall be called Hephzibah and your land Beulah for the Lord delights in you and your land shall be marvelous. Toiti bona tera kubiri nti alekedwa sone nsiyo teriti bona te eyazika ne oliti bona ti gwe gwe nsanyukira ne nsiyo eriti bwa eyafumbirwa kubanga mukama akusanyukira ne nsiyo erifumbirwa. Mene of us. Banji kufe. We say this has been. Tuka amarchi ochiganye. There are people of God. Wali abantu bakatonda. Both in the old testament era and in the new testament. Mudagane ne mpya ne bisemere kane kadde. Abaga no kuli chigambe chunte chite chisoboka. Just say this God. Baga matka tondo. Kwensinza. This 
dryness that is in my life. Oh, but you will not come. I will cry out to the Lord until he sends his spirit. Until, until he sends the rain and then life is sweet. I have been praying for revival and I ask that we should hold together and come to the Lord. That hardness of a heart in the hearts of people of the people of God is the one which is we revival is not being hindered by the wicked out there in the world. The hindrance to revival is the people of God. When people's hearts are broken before God, the Holy Spirit comes upon us. We shall become a solution. The wicked is in our nation. Talking about wickedness that is happening among the non-believers. Judging who and whoever for what they have done wrong. It will not bring change. Prayer that is persistent that is desperate will bring about the pouring of the Spirit of the living God. And that dry sparrow will go and the dry ground and the thirsty land shall be softened and life will spring and the people even the hard the most hardened criminals they will run to church to find the Lord Jesus I have read a lot about revivals in the past where God has moved through his spirit in a sovereign manner. You will not need to mobilize even people. You will not even say, please come to church. Churches will be filled. People will be saved. Because of the sovereign will of God. Praise God. I will stop here. I believe I shall. Amen.